Hello everyone, this is Powell Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about an upcoming cooldown with flash flooding as well as a tropical disturbance. So if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Uh, this is your map for August 2nd. And these are actually near or record lows this morning with that cool down that's already impacted much of the north. So all these areas in the uh, light shaded green color, that is near record daily lows this morning. But anywhere in the blue, that is actually either tying or actually breaking a daily low. So that's got some bona fide cooler air for August standards. And that's going to be pressing further south as we go throughout the day today. And it's dropping some very heavy rain along with it. So as we take a look at the latest uh, satellite picture this morning, you can see that cold front draped all the way down to the deep south. It's very rare for this time of year. It's almost going to be impacting uh, Houston later on this afternoon. But right along this boundary here, you can definitely see in and around the Dallas Worth area this morning, they're just getting some very heavy rain. Uh, and even last night along this front, and this is all draped around uh, portions of uh, Mississippi and Alabama this morning. But that's the concern along this front is, is going to be a slow lingering front pretty much all week long. That's going to dump some very heavy rain right along the front. And that's going to be a cause of concern for some flash flooding uh, along with it. But you can definitely see behind it. It's got much cooler and drier air. This feels really nice uh, for for August uh, standards, but you can you can definitely see the monsoon continues to remain alive and well. I mean, Tucson just reported over eight inches for the month of July, and almost what is that four times their their daily average what they typically see in July. So they've had some some uh, an extreme amount of rain and they're going to be in getting some more rain uh going into august so let me take you through what's going to happen as far as the big picture here's the latest uh 500 millibar uh, what's happening on the north american view uh you've got the ridge dominating over uh, the pacific northwest bringing those well above average uh temperatures there's the flow. You had the, uh, e uh, the, the Arctic Oscillation go negative. You had the Eastern Pacific Oscillation go negative. That's what's actually allowed this uh, cooler air to filter all the way down from Canada, impacting the Northeast, the Ohio Valley, now impacting the, the South and the Southeast that will get it today. But it's definitely got some cooler air uh, like I showed you. But as we go into that Thursday time frame. Uh, yeah, we have that cool front that continues to remain uh, kind of lingering off the coastal communities. But you can definitely see we got a developing trough out here in the Pacific Northwest. We're still warm uh, 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 from that ridge as the ridge tries to build back into the northeast. So they're experiencing those much cooler conditions this morning. But by Thursday, you are going to be warming up. Um, as as you go deeper into the weekend, as we're trying to uh, get some cooler air going to be impacting the Pacific Northwest. But I think that's going to happen by the time we roll into the weekend, because uh, a lot of that trough, that will be replaced. So you're getting some well above average temperatures now. But by this weekend, you'll be just the total opposite. You'll have, a, you know, below average temperatures. And that's going to be feeling really nice as the ridge will shift off into the uh, central upper upper plains and eventually going to be impacting over the northeast where they're getting the cooler air so the pattern is going to flip as we go throughout the week but let's zoom into the hazards uh today what really stands out uh two days ago this whole entire area was under a heat advisory and excessive heat warnings and that's no longer the case i mean that's because that cold front is impacting those areas and bringing some a welcome relief from the heat as the ridge tries to build back into the west uh into parts of uh, california and that's why they're replaced now with some of those excessive heat watches as the monsoon continues to remain alive and well uh now it's shifted more or less more or less into uh, new mexico into colorado but yeah creeping into uh, idaho and montana with some much needed rain uh, for them. So let's take a look at the guidance uh, for, for later on this afternoon. There's that cold front will continue to drape further, further south. 
So today, this is where the rainfall could lie uh, anywhere from Arkansas, from Dallas, Fort Worth, all the way down into the, um, you know, Austin, San Antonio, into the Houston area. Pretty much the entire state of Louisiana is going to get impacted with some very heavy rain uh, today. And then all along the uh, Mississippi and Alabama here, southern portions of Georgia. And as this uh, front will more or less uh, kind of stall out, I'm definitely concerned about this boundary here into South Carolina and North Carolina as that monsoon will remain alive and well where they had the flash flood watches. That's where you're going to be seeing some of the some of the heavier rains uh, going to be impacting those regions uh, for uh, for for today. But look at the temperatures. I mean, it's going to be nice. I mean, that is that is some serious cool air for August standards. I mean, widespread 80s. It's going to be hard pressed to even get out of the 80s in the Dallas Fort Worth area uh, for much of Louisiana and Mississippi and Alabama, Tennessee Valley, widespread 70s for the Ohio Valley. I mean, Maine over here is showing off. I mean, they're gonna be hard pressed to even get out of the 50s. <laughs> so that is some definitely, that is some definitely cooler air. And that that's just gonna continue to press uh, southward, you know, with that cold front. And that eventually that cold front actually makes it all the way into the Gulf of Mexico, if you if you can actually believe that. So where the heavier rain is going to fall today, uh, that's where going in tomorrow, that that uh, cold front just continues to press south. So I showed you the rain today for tomorrow on Tuesday. Yeah, it's going to be draped across the, the southern coastal communities of Houston to New Orleans to uh, the Florida Panhandle, the southeast regions of uh, Georgia. But then, yeah, this this zone right here, this is the bullseye that's setting up all week long from Savannah to Virginia Beach. They're going to be picking up some very heavy rain. Uh, and then the monsoon will, will remain alive and well away from Arizona now, but as it shifts into New Mexico, shifts further into Colorado, and shifts further into to Wyoming, with those uh, with those heavier rains as the ridge builds builds in. So as we take a look at that Wednesday time frame, there's the cold front, yeah, all the way, and it's still blue, so it's still pressing south as a cold front. If you can believe it or not, I mean that that gets all the way down into the Gulf, and so. As it goes into the Gulf, it's going to have those overrunning conditions. So we got to keep those heavier rains alive along that boundary here. And then where it stalls and kind of lingers, there's the bullseye again from Savannah to Virginia Beach. That is definitely going to be adding, you know, to those totals is going to be adding up in a big way uh, going forward. But man, it's a trifecta of storms out here in the Pacific. You got Hilda, you got Tropical Depression 10 here. And then we actually have another one that's trying to form as well. So it's been very active uh, in the Pacific. But as we go through the week, with that cold front coming off the coast, there's definitely all that activity in the Pacific. It's going to be transferring over into the Atlantic. And I and the, things are going to be starting to get really active uh, on the Atlantic side. So at first, uh, first concern would be along the coast. So we have to watch this stalled front that's going to be coming off the coast into the Gulf of Mexico along the North Carolina coast. Uh, we'll just have to see how this is this plays out. But this is definitely something to um, to to watch and be be on the lookout for. If there's a you know you always watch tails of fronts this time of year, especially going into August, especially going into you know towards peak hurricane season, it's a little bit easier. Uh, to spin up these tropical uh, systems in a, in a in a quick way, so we'll have to watch this front. But yeah, definitely off here, off the uh, African coast, there's a bona fide uh, tropical wave that's going to be becoming a, a tropical disturbance by the time we get into that you know fifth and August sixth time frame. The the EPS guidance has this a pretty high probability by then, about eighty to ninety percent of uh, forming. So. I do expect if nothing comes out of the coastal regions, I do expect this to be uh, probably our next tropical system that we'll have to track uh, going in towards, uh, you know, late this weekend, going into the following week with this. But we've got plenty of time uh, to track this uh, particular uh, tropical disturbance. So as we move through time, there's there's that Thursday time frame, uh, August the 5th, there's the cold front will continue to remain down to the south. So right along those areas into South Texas and to the southeast, it's going to be dumping some very heavy rain just right, right along the coast. That'll eventually try to creep into places like Jersey. 
but these are along along the coastal communities as we try to get some rain to start entering the picture back again for uh, the Pacific Northwest. But as we go into that Friday time frame, there's there's the boundary. It's like a broken record with this cold front. It's just going to stall and linger really much all week long. And that's what's going to create those flooding rains along those coastal com communities. And some of these totals could be really impressive and serious uh, for flood concerns. Uh, could be up, upwards to double digit totals by the time we get into uh, the weekend in these areas. So definitely a, con a concern for flash flooding these, in these areas. Um, as the Pacific Northwest finally starts to creep back some rain into Washington and parts of Oregon, and then actually even northern Idaho and uh, parts of Montana as well. So with a combination of this cooler air, uh, hopefully with all this uh, rain going to be start entering back in the picture, this will help with the wildfires out there that uh, the firefighters have been battling uh, and trying their hardest to, to uh, gain advantage on. But look at the temperatures as we transfer into uh, that Saturday time frame. Uh, like I mentioned, I think we're going to be a, a complete flip from where we are now. So by the time we get into Saturday, there's that trough digging in. So now we got those below average temperatures in you know, Washington and Oregon and Idaho and Wyoming as the ridge will sneak into the central upper central plains with those above average anomalies and start entering those you know above average anomalies into the Ohio Valley as well as the Northeast again. We're down to the south where where you got the the you know cold front the cooler air where it's cloudy uh it's going to be somewhat near or, or below below average uh for for them as we go into that uh that there's the there's the rain prospects as we go into saturday the rain the uh, cold front uh, by that by this time tries to fizzle out so like i mentioned it'll be over over the uh, gulf of mexico over the southeast coast we'll just have to see what's the how, how all this uh, comes together uh, if there's any any tropical type uh, entity that tries to form but what what does come back uh by then after, as the monsoon will kind of die down for a couple of days is uh is the monsoon with with yet another tropical system coming out of the eastern pacific creating that monsoon flow again and will bring the rains back into portions of uh, arizona again as we go into that saturday time frame as we go into sunday there's your cooler temperatures to continue to remain uh, impacting the Pacific Northwest. So that'll be a welcome relief all week, weekend long. And there's the trough underneath here as it showing the heavier rain starting to come back into uh, portions of Southern uh, Arizona as the ridge just kind of, yes, kind of amplifies over the, over the Ohio Valley and, and the, uh, the Northeast. By the time we get in that Sunday time frame. And there's your outlook for Sunday with the rain prospects, with the monsoon, the, the kind of stalled front down here. And then we have that trough that comes in from the Pacific Northwest. There's your rain prospects that we have to be concerned about along the coastal communities with that front stalling out from most of the week. Um, it's going to be raining in Dallas this today, but this further south, I think you'll start drying out as we go into that Wednesday time frame. But all the all the heavier rains will start pressing southward into Houston, the New Orleans, and then really starts to pick up as we go into the Florida Panhandle, and especially along uh, the coast here into southeast Georgia, and then uh, right along uh, South Carolina and North Carolina. Yeah, these totals are almost pretty much double digits. So this is definitely a concern. This has been a bullseye for the last several days, and the data is still showing that it's going to happen. So there's some serious flash flooding out there, but there's the monsoon continues to remain live as we have some rain starting to creep back in for the Pacific Northwest. And it for, continues to remain uh, pretty much active for the upper portions of uh, the upper plains Then uh, more rains for the Northeast where they've, they've had a, you know, a lot of places, seven or eight places in, in uh, the Northeast. Uh, they had record rainfall for July, now, all time reddest, uh, July on record for portions of the Northeast. So they're just coming out of that as well. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video and definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before after the storm.